Alright guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to be doing somewhat of a tech video and I'm going to be showing you my recording settings for MSI Afterburn. Uh, so if you don't know what that program is, it's uh, basically a free game recorder. And I would personally uh, prefer it over such programs like Fraps and stuff which also record your game. Uh, there are a lot of reasons why I prefer MSI Afterburner, like um, it's less intensive on your CPU uh, while it's open and stuff so you get better frame rates and also it doesn't limit you to the frame rate that you're recording at. So if you're uh, recording your game at 30 frames a second you can still play uh, your game in just say 60 frames a second or whatever your PC can handle. Uh, so personally I think this is a lot better than Fraps and such, um, this is my opinion anyway. And in this video I'm just going to be showing you guys my settings for recording to get the best quality with the best performance out of your computer. So, first thing you're going to do if you haven't downloaded already, just go to this site as you can see here. Uh, I'll have a link as uh, first thing in the description. And you just want to click this download button right here, so it's download MSI Afterburner. So you want to just download that and install it. And then once you have that done, just come back to the video and then we're going to show you what to do. Uh, so once you have that done, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Start and then All Programs and then we're going to scroll down until we see MSI Afterburner right here. I'm going to click that and then we're going to see these two files right here which we are going to use. Uh, you're also going to get a README on Install and SKD but we're not going to get into that. We just want to click first on the MSI Afterburner on-screen display server. We're going to click that and then once that decides to open here, I have it right here down in here but it should open anyway, here we go. We should get this program right here. If you don't get this up, it'll, it'll be down here and you just need to click it like I did and this will come up anyway. Uh, so these are the first settings we're going to change. So we're going to leave this on global right here. And um, so what I'm going to say first of all, before I get into some of the settings, if I have some things maybe unticked and you have them ticked or whatever, and I don't speak about them, it's just mainly because uh, I don't feel they're important to say and I just have them for my personal preferences. Uh, but there is something that, if there is something that I do uh, need you to change if you want to get the best performance, then I, I will tell you. But don't be afraid if you see some things different from mine um, and I don't talk about it, it's just because I don't feel like you need to uh, change them specifically for your computer. Uh, if you feel you're not getting the best frames, feel free to go back and change them to exactly what I have. Um, and then it may help you or may not. This, this is what uh, works for my computer. Alright, so in the general pro properties right here, you can click it, uh, you can make it start with Windows if you want, so this is a personal preference. Uh, when your computer starts, if you want to do start up in your taskbar, uh, then you can do that, just make this go on. I personally have it off and I don't need it to start up on my computer. Um, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to go to the uh, app application detection level and we're going to kick this to high. I think it was on lower, no? Uh, so yeah, put that to high. We're going to have stealth mode on, we're going to have uh, on-screen on display support on, and the on-screen on screen display support rendering mode to vector 2D. Uh, I think it was on 3D, but yeah. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to keep this all the same, the same uh, on-screen display shadow, just as you can see with the 60, it just puts a bit of a shadow behind it, I like it, puts it on. And we're going to have this to viewport, and we're going to have show own statistics as on. And that's pretty much it with this right here. So then we can go and minimize that down. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to the all programs and MSI Afterburner and we're going to actually open the program. Uh, so when it does open, you'll see this right here. And this, uh, this very cool looking window comes up. And we're not going to really touch anything here. It might look a bit, um, a bit intimidating, but we're just going to go down to the settings button right here. And if you see me looking over to the side right here, it's just because I have my webcam there so I can see what I'm doing. This is going right. And we have some options here that we're going to change. So as I said earlier, if I don't go over some stuff that is different in mine to yours, then don't worry about it. It's just with my computer. Uh, so some of this stuff we're going to leave the same. This is just my graphics card. Uh, so here we can start with Windows. And if we click Start with Windows, it will just come up. And we can click Start Minimize, so it will just uh, come up in the taskbar instead of actually just popping up on your screen. Uh, so that is something, if personal preference, if you want it to change, you can do that. Uh, we're going to have these two ticked right here. I think they're set like that at default. That's all in the general tab. We're going to go into the monitoring tab. And right here, we're going to leave all this the same. And down here, so what you want to do is if you want to see your frame rate while you're recording, and I personally think it's um, a very good thing to have, uh, then you want to have that ticked. Um, so you get to see your frame rate, you get to see how many frames you're getting, make sure it's over 30 for uh, uploading to YouTube, recording for YouTube. So we're going to have, I have all these ticked as you can see here. Um, and what you want to do, if you want to have a certain one on top, uh, you just drag it, you can drag it down if you want the GPU temperature on top, you can drag it up uh, if you want the frame rate to be on top, 
Uh, if you don't want your GPU temperature, you don't really care for that, you want to have more, um, you want to be able to see it more on the screen, then you can just untick that and then it won't show your GPU temperature. So if you don't want another, it'll be up in the top left. If you don't want and another um, text bar going across, then you can just untick the ones you don't want. And again, move them around you want to see which ones are top and stuff. Uh, so we're going to leave all these the same. We're going to show on screen display. And yeah, I think that's all that we have to go for from here. Again, if you want to just pause the video and go check if yours is exactly the same, then feel free to do that. On screen display. Uh, so to toggle the on screen display, I keep all of these at none. So it just stays on the screen. I don't, um, I don't have it so that it goes off and on. You can if you want, if you don't want to have the text up in the top corner. Um, then again, you can feel free to do that. You can show your system time up in the top. If you're in the middle of a game and you just really don't, don't know what time it is, you don't want to go and check your phone, you can just see it up in the top right hand corner. Uh, this right here, so uh, personally I would keep this off. So basically what this is doing is uh, if you want the actual writing to come up here uh, in the actual recording, then you can set it to do that like that. I personally have it off, I don't like it. Um, because people watching the video, they, they don't really want to know what temperature your GPU is or um, what frames second you're getting and stuff. So personally, I'd have that off better for uploading to YouTube and stuff. And it also still shows it while you are recording. It shows it to you, but not in the actual video. All right, so now we're going to go into the screen capture tab. Um, so I personally don't have this set up right now because I don't use it. I don't feel a need for it that much, but um, it can be handy to have. So if you want to toggle a hotkey for it, it can be whatever you want to set it. Just click on it and then press whatever key you want and then it'll automatically go to that. Uh, the screenshot format, uh, I just keep it on BPM. It doesn't really, um, it wouldn't really bother me again. I wouldn't be really into any of this kind of stuff with the screen capture, but it is handy to have, I suppose. Uh, with the quality, personally, I'd have this straight up as 100%. Um, can we change it down? No, I don't know why that is. Uh, but yeah, uh, 100% really, because you're only taking the screenshot, you're not actually um, recording. So it's not like having it 100% is going to give you a massive frame frame rate drop or anything. It'll only be just uh, recording the screen, then that's it. And again, obviously, if you do want to turn it down, you can. Uh, the screenshots folder, I just have it to the default one. Uh, if you want to set it to maybe, uh, you know, another hard drive or where you record your videos and something, you can do it like that. You can also click it to view uh, any of your screenshots or maybe. Oh um, yeah, so that's all with the screen capture. Um, the video capture now, this is going to be the main thing that you're really going to need to concentrate with uh, if you want to get the best frame rate and the best recording with your games. Um, so first thing, uh, the hotkey for recording. I have this on my number pad on the right hand side. I have it as the plus key. Uh, I personally don't use that for anything ever, and uh, if, you ever, if I ever did need to use the plus key, then I could just use it on the number row on the main part of the keyboard. Uh, so if you have a number pad, I'd recommend having it that key. It's out of the way, and it's not like you could accidentally hit it, because you'd never really be over at this side anyway. Uh, personally anyway, so uh, if you... Uh, <laughs> having trouble talking right now. If you are unsure of what key to put it as, this is a good key, uh, in my opinion. So the video format, I'm just going to keep it as MJPG, compress, compress, compression. Uh, it works the best for me. If you want to do um, test out the other ones, trial and error, just to see what you want to get the best quality at for the best frame rate, it's totally up to you. Uh, this is what I pick anyway. So the quality, personally, I have this set to 100%, uh, but it does take a lot of, out of your computer to have it at 100%. Um, if you don't have the best computer, you still want to get really good quality, I'd recommend uh, 85. That is... Um, it gets you a lot more frames, but it also has really good quality still. It's not uh, obviously 100% quality, but it is very good. Uh, so anything from 80% to 100, I think, is very good for uploading to YouTube, and it, it looks really, really good. Uh, so the frame rate size. I want to talk about this a little bit. So um, YouTube videos are in the aspect ratio of 16 by 9, as you can see here. So these are the ones that you're going to want to use if you're uploading it to YouTube. Uh, you don't want anything like 16 by 10 or anything like that, just because... Um, you get black bars on your video, so that's not what you want. So most people, uh, if you're uploading pretty much anything to YouTube, they'll upload in 720p. Uh, a lot of people watch it in that. Some people say 1080p is a bit overkill, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, so if you want 720p video, you can go to 720p. That's personally what I record at normally. Uh, I don't have the PC to record at 1080p. Uh, just say, if this is what you want to use, uh, by the way, if you want to record at 1080p, 16 by 9 1080p. That's the best quality you can upload to YouTube at. And yeah, so 
Uh, 1080p, personally when I record with this, I, I get about 20 frames a second, so that is not good enough for uploading YouTube videos at all. Uh, it's a lot choppy and laggy and stuff, so you don't want to do that. But if I upload to 720p, record in 720p, I could get maybe 50 or 60 frames a second. So, um, it does, it's a lot handier on your computer to record in 720p. Uh, but, you know, if I could, I would record in 10, but it's a personal preference anyway. Uh, so here, your frame rate. I have this at 30 frames a second. The reason I have it at that is because the highest frames you can get uh, on a YouTube video is 30 frames a second. So can't go any higher than that. So uh, I keep it at the highest it can go. Um, it's pretty much the default for every video really on YouTube to have at least at the yeah at least 30 frames a second. You can't get any higher. So that's what you want. Uh, if it's any lower, people are going to be noticing it and they will get mad at it. They maybe won't want to watch your videos and stuff. So 30 frames a second is good. Um, so the frame rate limit, yeah, I have this app disabled here at the bottom just because uh, I don't really want to have a limit on my frame rate. So uh, just say you can have a PC and you can record a game in just say for whatever reason 300 frames a second, but you're only recording in 30 frames a second. This limit right here, you can make it so that it won't go past 100 frames a second. Um, so you can have it maybe, it's stuck on the limit that you're recording at. So if you're recording 30 frames a second for whatever reason, if you want to play at that, you can play at 30, you can also play at 60, you know, all the way up. So I personally have that off because there's no reason for it to go to a limit, I think, anyway. Uh, so the videos folder. I have it set here to an external hard drive. As you can see, these are all my videos that I have uh, just recorded, my raw recordings. Uh, they all go to a separate hard drive. The reason I do that is because, for one, uh, the file size for videos are huge, uh, especially if recording gameplay videos. So. Uh, I have a 3TB hard drive so I don't need to worry about uh, running out of space or anything if I'm recording if I'm doing a long recording session or whatever. Uh, so that is handy, it also puts off a lot of strain on your CPU instead of having to um, record it to the same hard drive that you're recording on. It, um, you don't get as, mu uh, as many frames in it that way, it's more of a strain on your computer. Uh, so down here, um, I kept this basically the same. One thing that you do want to untick is enable gamma correction, you want to leave that off just because um, that uses a fair bit of your CPU, so I want to keep that off, it's handy anyway. And yeah, that's all that there is here, again if yours is different you can check out mine if you want, you can change it to mine, just check it out yourself, trial and error. Let's see what it's like. Uh, so the audio capture property, this is very important actually. So the way I have it here is I have a recording my system sound and I also have a recording my Blue Snowball microphone, which is um, what you hear in my voice with. Uh, so the way you want to do this is you want to go to WAS API playback devices and uh, then you want to, what you want to do is you won't obviously have turtle beaches if you don't have a turtle beach headset so uh, my computer sound is going to this headset right here uh, but if you have it maybe set to you know your Astro headset or even your speakers it will come up here um, so you just hit it to whatever you're hearing your sound from uh, so I have it as my turtle beaches. You can also enable um, push the talk hotkey so just to here whenever you push a button. I personally have that off, I don't like that. Oops, stay at certain beaches. So here, uh, the audio source 2 I have it as your microphone, that's what you're going to use. So you want to go to the WAS API uh, capture device and then you want to go to your auto select here and then you want to set it to the micro microphone that you want to use to record. So personally I have um, a professional micro microphone out of Blue Snowball. You can also make it record uh, the mic in your headset, maybe your webcam. Uh, whatever you want, whatever webcam you want to use for recording, uh, that's how you get it set up. I personally had a problem getting this to work, I didn't know how to do it. Uh, so if you're having trouble, that is how you do it. So uh, I kept all these the same anyway. Uh, didn't do any changes with that. So let's see, profiles right here. I didn't touch any of those. So basically what profiles are, um, I'm not sure of it, but what I, uh, what I know of them from other programs and stuff is, uh, if you have your settings saved as uh, the way you want them now, and it's only used to record a certain thing, then you can save uh, that as this profile, let's just say. And um, maybe if you need a completely different setting for a different reason, then you can set it as the second profile and stuff. Uh, so that's if you want to use that. I personally don't have it, anything like that. I don't veneer anything like that. I have it uh, find a way this right here. Uh, user interface, this is just showing you what it looks like here. Again, I kept this as default. I'll see you guys. So that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Uh, I think it is a, a long enough video, but I wanted to kind of go into detail, just showing you guys um, the settings that I have anyway. Uh, hopefully, this will help you out. Any help you out? Uh, help you out anyway. Uh, if you did I really appreciate a like?
Uh, also, if you want to subscribe, I really appreciate that. And gaming videos normally. Now and again with the tech video, just showing you guys how to do some tips and stuff. And yeah, stuff like that. Uh, so hopefully, uh, tell me in the comments if this worked out for you, if you're getting better frames and stuff while you're recording with this. And yeah guys, that's going to be it for this video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.